One night, while traveling west up the train tracks from Ranger Station Charlie, we climb a hill to see that the train tracks end at a blocked off train tunnel. But even though we find a campfire here, the only life we find is a group of golden geckos. That is, until a mole rat attacks us from behind. Exploring the scene, we quickly discover what happened. A group of viper gunslingers had struck this camp, but the light from their campfire likely attracted the golden geckos, which quickly overwhelmed and killed them. We find and can loot their corpses on a hillside to the north. It was about this time that the sun began to rise on the Mojave. Robco's wondrous Pip-Boy technology tells us that there's an undiscovered location to the west, I thought it might have been this train tunnel, but no. Whatever our Pip-Boy compass is detecting must be on the hillside overlooking the tunnel entrance. We find a dirt path that allows us to climb up on top of the train tunnel. We see red marks on our compass, but no sign of any enemy. Eventually, we crest a hill to see a shack off to the north. Could that be the undiscovered location? But just then... Oh no, Cass! Oh, not dead! Holy, running up the hill we can see if Cass is okay. Oh no, you all right? <sighs> ah, she's fine. Just needs a little whiskey. Eddie seems none the worse for wear. Good grief, these death claws rushed us out of nowhere. And it's then we realize that there are two undiscovered locations in this area. The shack to the north and the hillside from where these death claw came. What could be over there? Well, since we see the shack, we'll start by exploring that way. But before going down, we do see another red mark on our compass. Out of an abundance of caution, we'll climb up behind the shack to clear anything back here so we don't get ambushed again. Whatever it is is coming from that gully. And then the fight started. Time to ah! Oh man, these Deathclaw. I tell you what, Deathclaw are scary in any Fallout game, but in Fallout New Vegas, they remain terrifying even at the highest levels. We discovered that this shack is called Harper's Shack. There's a lone wanderer motorcycle parked outside and three boxes, all of which are empty. Whomever owns this shack has a nice farm of prickly pear cactuses outside, a wonderful source of constant food. And on the southwestern side of the shack, we do find a campfire. Heading inside the shack, we see that it's well outfitted. Look at this place. A reloading bench to the southwest right next to a workbench. There is an adjoining room. Looks like this was his bedroom. There are a couple of lockers with a straight razor in one of them. Some shelves with a varmint rifle and a hovering skillet. Two ammo canisters in the corner with ammunition. A locker with scrap inside. Another ammo canister next to a footlocker with toys in it. And a bunk bed. Looks like whomever lived here lived here with a child, but we don't find any evidence of what happened to them. In the northern corner, we find a table Table, upon which is a Sunset Sarsaparilla Star Bottle Cap. And in a box nearby, we find one bottle of unopened Sunset Sarsaparilla. Heading out of the bedroom, we can explore some shelves to the left. On the table in the middle of the shack is scrap. This was clearly a workshop. Moving to the north, we find picks, wrenches, hammers, all sorts of tools, more crafting components, and more boxes. 
Harper's Shack is one of the best candidates for player housing outside of the Lucky 38. It's not only a marked location, but the containers inside don't respawn contents, meaning everything here is safe for storage. And we've got everything we need, a place to sleep, a reloading bench, a workbench, and a campfire. The only drawback, <laughs> of course, is the death claw. I don't know if that's gonna be that big of an issue, but there is that. Now, we need to head outside to find out exactly where these Deathclaw were coming from. Following the trail of Deathclaw corpses up to the southwest, we discover Deadwind Cavern. And just outside, we see some human bones buried in the dirt. An ominous sign. But you know what? Since we've got Cass with us, and we can benefit from her Whiskey Rose perk, we'll go ahead and pop a whiskey. Bottoms up. Before heading inside. We arrive in a darkened cave, and we can go one of two directions, west or east, but we see movement to the west. Deathclaw. Let's look at this. All I'm doing is... Poor Cass got knocked out again. Ah, oh, but she hops up good as new. But if that many death claw were at the entrance, how many are deeper in? We'll start exploring this chamber in a clockwise fashion. It's possible that we can be sent here pretty early in the game when doing quests for Red Lucy at the Thorn. This is one of the places she sends us to to get Deathclaw eggs, but it's easily the most difficult place to clear. When I did the quest, I found the eggs at the quarry, but now it's about time I clear this place. We discovered that this is just one big room with a pillar in the middle, so the northeastern path from the entrance just wraps around the pillar. Both paths converge at a tunnel leading down to the northeast. Creeping down, we immediately find another Deathclaw. Two of them creeping closer ever so quietly. Let's kick the here. Gonna not even Whoop. And a few sneak criticals save the day. We arrive at another split. There's a path off to the north and a path to the southeast where we killed these Deathclaw. This chamber is huge, with a bunch of false passages in the walls, which end up just being Nux. And then the fight started. Uh-oh. You're just in time for your ass whipping. Oh no. There's an opening in this wall, only partially concealed with stalagmites and stalactites. Looks like a Deathclaw saw us. Since this room is a dead end, we can turn around, retrace our steps, and then take the path to the north. This rounds a corner to the northeast, where we find more Deathclaw. You're just in time for your ass whipping. Creeping forward, we see a head emerge from a hidden passage to the west. Sorry, Cass. Better than waking up in jail, I guess. Imagine if she wasn't here to act as a meat shield. I don't know if I would have survived that. We see that these Deathclaw came up from a tunnel to the northwest. It was a mother Deathclaw and her babies. But there's nothing left in this chamber once we lure them out of it. So heading back up and continuing to the east, we see that the path twists again, this time to the south. Got him. 
Continuing southeast down the passageway, we see that it splits again. From here, a path moves to the northeast. But before we head down there, we find those stalagmites and stalactites that we were on the other side of a moment ago, and lying next to some glowing fungus is a skeleton with a duffel bag. Inside the duffel bag is a hoard of treasure. Ballistic ammunition, energy ammunition, C4 explosives, an assortment of chems and whiskey. Well, with Cass here, that will come in handy. In fact, since it already wore off, let's go ahead and chug one now. Now all I need is some shame to wash it down with. Oh, it's shame you want, Cass? We'll talk about that later. For now, we need to head down the path to the northeast. It rounds a corner to the southeast where we find even more Deathclaw. Oh, gosh. Tell me that was all of them. At least Cass didn't get knocked out this battle. Heading inside, we find the end of the cave. This was their main nest. And after exploring the perimeter, we find on the northeastern side of the cave, a Brotherhood of Steel Paladin in a full suit of T-45 power armor. On her body are 32 40 millimeter grenades, 12 40 millimeter incendiary grenades, the suit of power armor which we can loot. And on the ground next to her is the completely unique weapon, Mercy. Mercy is a unique grenade machine gun. And here I thought Thump Thump was a beast. This is the best grenade machine gun in the entire game by a huge margin. Instead of using the standard 25 millimeter grenades of the grenade machine gun, it uses the 40 millimeter grenades, which are much harder to find in the game and much more expensive to buy from merchants. Because it uses a larger type of ammunition, it has a much smaller ammo capacity. It only holds 18 grenades before you have to reload it, compared to the grenade machine gun's capacity of 30. And its attacks per second are only slightly better than a standard grenade machine gun, 3.1 compared to 3. But a modified standard grenade machine gun can reach an attacks per second of 4.5. However, despite those limitations, Mercy is better in almost every way. First, a typical grenade machine gun does only splash damage. It does 50 area of effect damage and zero standard damage. Mercy, however, does double the splash damage, 100 compared to 50, and in addition, it does five damage per attack. But even more impressive is its critical chance multiplier. The standard grenade machine gun only has a 0.28 critical chance percent multiplier. Mercy has a 13.44 critical chance percent multiplier, giving us a much greater chance to land a critical strike with this thing even outside of vats and when not hidden. All of this combined puts the DPS of Mercy up to 325.5 compared to a standard grenade machine gun's 150. It even surpasses a modified grenade machine gun, which has a DPS of 225. But is it practical? <laughs> All that depends. In situations like what we had at the beginning of this video when we were surprised by those Deathclaw, I'm sure it would have come in handy. A lot of powerful splash damage in a highly concentrated area is pretty great. However, having to reload every 18 rounds is a bit of a bummer. For a weapon that fires as fast as this one does, we're gonna be whipping through those 18 rounds pretty quickly. The viability of a weapon like this is questionable on hardcore mode, where ammunition has weight. So to use this on hardcore mode, we're gonna be holding one of the heaviest weapons in the game, and carrying some of the heaviest ammunition in the game, but it's a machine gun so it eats through that ammunition really fast. If you want to turn this thing into your everyday weapon, the best place to get ammunition is from Quartermaster Barden at Hoover Dam, whom we met during my series on the NCR. 
He's the only merchant in the entire game that stockpiles a huge amount of this type of ammunition. He can sell over 300 40mm grenades at a time. We can buy some from the Armorer at Red Rock Canyon, the Van Graffs, the merchants at the 188 Trading Post, and even from an ammunition vendor at Nellis Air Force Base. But strangely enough, Vendertron from the Gunrunners doesn't sell it. My favorite thing about this weapon is the unique story that comes along with it, a story we can divine from the graffiti that we find on the side. In my gameplay, I discovered that I apparently had a mod installed that reskinned it, but in an unmodded game, on the side of the weapon, in white paint, we find the words, Hey Guai, Bye Bye. This gives us the impression that it was used by U.S. servicemen to blanket an area with explosives where they thought they might find Chinese stealth warriors hiding. Hei Guai is in reference to the Hei Guai Chinese Stealth Commandos, whose Chinese stealth armor we find in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. And that makes perfect sense to me. If I knew that I was being stalked by invisible warriors, I'd want a weapon that would do a ton of splash damage. Another cool thing about this weapon is the computer screen on it. The text on the screen doesn't really mean anything. It's part of a bash script for scripting out actions in Linux and Unix. It's really small in the game. I don't think it was intended to be read because it doesn't make any sense. As we leave the cave, we see another undiscovered location on our Pip-Boy compass to the northwest. What on earth could this be? We'll head that way to find out, but sadly I'm out of time. We'll discover what's on the other side of those rocks in tomorrow's episode. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I'm out of town right now, but I didn't want to leave you guys with nothing, so I whipped up this quick video to tide you over until I get back. When I return, I'll come back with a bunch of footage that I can use to turn into some exciting new content. So stay tuned for that. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. It's everyone's favorite villain from Fallout 3 with a theme song, Eulogy Jones. This shirt comes in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can also find this design on a bunch of other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow bright and early with some brand new, albeit shorter, videos.